What's going on guys? Mark back in the coral room on Mark's Aquatics. I thought I'd give you a little update on the baby clownfish. Now as you can see, I've put two little purple tipped anemones in there with them because they were starting to go down to the bottom, starting to go in amongst the that silver zinnia that you can see in the back there and a couple of mushrooms as well and trying to host those. So I thought I'd put these in for them. I put two in there because when they're young they do tend to bicker a bit and one of them is decided he's going to have this one and that little guy that's hiding behind the pot who's a little bit more shy has decided he's going to have that one in the pot now that one decided it wasn't going to take root and suck to the bottom of the glass so i've just put him in that pot just to keep him upright so this little guy can go in amongst it he's going to go in his mate's one now he might he might get told off in a minute and told to go back to his but they're not used to the camera being in their faces so so much so um, that's why they're tending to hide because of the camera is quite close to the tank what I've got here is some of the rotifers that I've been bringing on and not rotifers these are actually copepods these are a little bit bigger now I've got them in a little pipette I'm not sure if you can see them there I'll try and get you to see them all hopping around in there there you go now we'll put them in there and hopefully if I squirt them down that way they're used to getting fed this way now so they might start coming out and picking them off. Let's see if they start coming out. You can see them just zipping around there. But they, I think I've spooked them a bit now with the with the camera and this little pipette. So uh, we might have to wait for a little bit. Put a few more in, and we'll see. There he goes. He saw that one. And now he's hopping around, feeding on the little copepods. That'll get them away from being shy. And hopefully then they'll come out a little bit more. And you can see them there, tucking into them. Now I've been bringing them up on the copepods and also sprinkling in some food, some small particulate food as well, which I've been transitioning them over. I've been using the Reef Plus, that one there, which is SPS coral food. But it's very, very fine. And they like to take the little bits out of the water column because it's a similar size and shape to the little copepods that go in there. It's the same kind of colour, so it's best to, when you're introducing baby clownfish to other foods is to do it very, very carefully because you can actually kill clownfish babies by putting in different foods. If you're used to feeding them on one kind of um, food and then you say bung in a load of brine shrimps straight away, you can actually shock them. They get so shocked with the, the new things in the tank that they can actually it will actually kill them, they will just see them drop into the bottom. It's happened to me in the past before and I couldn't really understand what was going on in the earlier days when I was brooding clownfish. But it can actually cause them such a massive shock that they will actually die. So I found the best thing to do is if you're feeding copepods or rotifers, just add a little bit of the food in there as well and just transition them over slowly, okay? But they look really, really happy in their little home. Look at that, sometimes they'll go in in the same anemone or sometimes the other one will shoot the other one out so I thought I'd put two in there just to keep them happy there you go get away from my anemone see this is what they do and they start bickering away but they've got another place to go or sometimes he likes to go up by the up by the outlet as well so but they're really coming on well look at that look little monkeys but they are super small still starting to get a little bit more color in them darker bit more darker on the back and between the fins between the bars like I said in the last video we did on these guys we got one which is a fully you know fully barred clownfish and the other one on the other side is like a mist bar it doesn't actually join up in the middle bar which I think is quite attractive little look but look at that they've got their own little anemones I hope you guys are all staying safe staying nice and healthy through this uh, awkward disease that's going around this horrible COVID-19 which is the world over now and um, I hope you guys are isolating yourselves up and staying safe and looking after the old folks that's for sure because uh, I say it's times like these where they need looking after and a big thank you to you NHS staff in the UK which are doing an absolutely splendid job putting themselves on the front line to uh, to save others massive big uh, round of applause for you guys and um, may you all be safe for your families as well 
Got some lovely maxi anemones in at the moment. Got a few on eBay if you guys are after one of these things. If you're bored and you're in isolation and you fancy one of these guys, I think I've got a few of them listed. Got a beautiful purple one there, purpley mauvey colour, lovely red, stunning greens, various different patterns. Some more over the other side, some more purple ones. I was going to put one of these in with the uh, with the clownfish, but I've known over the past I've actually had carpet anemones actually eat um, clownfish, believe it or not. Some of the stings on them are very, very powerful on the bigger on the bigger ones. These maxis are fine to use. These little tiny ones they don't get more than a, I would say a, a, a jam jar size, maybe a little bit bigger when they're fully open. They don't get much bigger than that, so they're ideal for nano tanks. Um, but I've had, I have noticed. Uh, sometimes in the past that they actually will consume and eat baby clownfish so um, you've got to be careful with that so I stuck them with the the pink tips instead but we got some beautiful colors in them in amongst there I'm not sure if it's going to pick up the blue top blue lights and you might see look at that they really do pop under the uh, under the blue lights of an evening time and they look lovely in the daytime lights as well what else can I got? What else can I show you guys around here? We got the mum and dad down below here. They've just had a load more babies. I can just show you those. We'll go down there. Right there you go. There's mum and dad. You can see on the back of the slate, right over, over there, we have another huge cluster of eggs up there. Another probably about another 300 eggs. I've got a few um, rotifers on the go, so I might try and bring a few of these guys on as well. The little ones that you see at the top, they've already been nabbed for a new home by one of my local um, people that come around and buy coral from me so uh, when they're big enough they're going to go to another home but so we've got lots of lots of other ones there on the go and they're doing a fantastic job as usual I think what I'll do is I'll grab them a little bit of food while I'm here and I can drop a little bit of food in for them I'll just grab my tongs and then we'll put a bit of food in there this is how they used to be in fed because I can gauge how much food if I just put one flake in like so she'll normally come and have a go at it she's had her morning feed so she might not be too keen with the camera there so maybe if I let it go she'll have a go at it he's just being aggressive because of the food go on then come and grab your food <laughs> No, oh, the males grabbed it now. If anything goes near the food, even if they're not hungry, they'll still run around with it and, and play with it. It's quite funny to watch them. But they're doing really, really nicely. Still got heaps of uh, acro corals in this tank here and a monstrous big hammer colony there and lots of little colonies as well, which I fragged up one a while ago and we've still got loads of those left and some nice torches. Some stunning zoas there as well. Look at those guys, the eagle eyes, and a lovely orange recordia as well, which is uh, and a little fan, a tiny little fan there. You can just see it waving away there by the uh, by that recordia. There you go, guys. I thought I'd bring you outside. Spring is in the air. Lovely sunny day. The old trees are starting to pop out. New leaves everywhere. It's a fantastic time of the year. Love the spring. And I just thought I'd show you my koi pond because I've just taken all the covers off which are now over there in the corner. I've got fish tanks, bowls, tanks and things all over the place out here for up and coming projects for the summer. And I thought I'd show you my big Nexus filter which runs the koi pond before I come and show you the koi, which is still a little bit quiet on the bottom. But this is the koi filter. This is what, this is the engine room of the koi pond, as it were. It's got that monstrous great valve down there which I built in for oh, a few years back now. That's where the water comes up through there, goes through here spins around there gets drawn through all this media here which in turn takes out all the all the particulate matter all the all the lumps and rubbish and leaves and things and then it goes into this chamber which is the biological side which then obviously takes care of the ammonia and nitrates and everything and then it goes through into this side here which then in turn I don't know if you can see down there a little basket right at the bottom that's where it's sucked all the way through and comes back out over the waterfall I'll take you this way now and we can have a look at the koi they're still a little bit quiet on the bottom there lovely reflection off the pond this morning sun's out 
There you go, I've got to be quiet because I've just taken the covers off. So they, they do get a little bit skittish this time of the year. So you can see that lovely tancho there which I've got. But they're all little sound asleep -o still. It's only about nine degrees the water still. But I think what we'll do is we'll go inside and I'll show you from in here. There you go, now we're inside the shed, inside the workshop, and here's the waterfall. I've got it on and running around half power at the moment, just to keep the revs down a little bit as the sun as it warms up. Oh there's one of them come in to say hello. Um, as it warms up a bit I'll increase that flow rate to create more oxygen in the water as well. You can see here there's the return from the Nexus filter there. So where I said that little cage was in that little hole, that's the return pipe there. And at the bottom drain, which is obviously on the bottom down there, that's where it, all the rubbish and the waste and everything gets sucked through into the filter. And that is the skimmer box, which is that thing there in the corner. That's where all the surface water gets drawn down, comes all the way along there, up through, up through the UV steriliser down there, and then comes out there. How about that? Thoroughly enjoyed building this pond. It's a shame that I never put it. I wasn't doing YouTube when I built this pond. I've got a slideshow on here somewhere, I think, where I did slides and took pictures throughout the build, which I'll quite and find it now. I'll link it up with this video so you can watch how it was built by frame by frame as I went along. It was a lot of digging, six foot deep, and um, with all this stonework as well. And it's lovely now because we've got all the all the native plants and things which are starting to grow in here, and the mosses all by themselves i haven't added anything to the wall it must have been the spores and things that have come in or blown in and uh, and they've taken root there and they're starting to grow those little ferns are absolutely beautiful they really are but all the koi are looking lovely there's no damage on there's no carp pox or anything like that on them this year which is lovely and they've put on some size that's for sure you can see they're still nice and chunky they haven't been fed since last year But they certainly are stunning fish. I think we've got around eight or nine. I lost a, I lost a couple uh, last year, but um, hopefully we'll get. I might get a few more in this year. I'm not sure if I'll get some smaller ones in and bring them along as well. Right, so that's the engine room lid all closed up now. All the plants are starting to come out again. My little Acer there. All those little buds starting to crack out stunning red these guys are when they first come out and some of the different grasses I've got there that little tree's not doing so well I've got a cunning I've got a feeling that my cat has been doing naughty spraying on that one there and he's killed it off with his little territory marking which he does the little monkey got some little daffodils still up in the corner pot with some nice other plants in there with some nice hostas come out of there later on if I can keep the slugs off them but everything's looking good. Gave the shed a nice clean, give the windows a clean. Koi are happy. So let's get back and say goodbye for these little tiny clownfish, I think. Well, we're back in the coral room, guys. And I think we'll end it on that one. I think I'm gonna be doing, I was gonna do some work on the Paladarian, the big one, the big six footer. But obviously going to builders merchants and picking up things that I need now is off the menu. So I can't really be doing things on that for some time, but I think we'll end it on this one. So from me and these little guys, stay safe. You're all stars. Love you loads. Keep your hands clean. And uh, I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Take care. Bye for now.